Tony, um, you know, you're, you're world renowned for your fear management, you're world renowned for uh, the psychological game in, in, in combat, whether it's street fighting, whether it's uh, reality based self defense, self protection, etc. Share with us, you know, the fear management or some of the principles you like to use with combatants, and I don't care what the sport is, but you know, let's what about jujitsu, use that as an example. Right. Um, so, so one of the things that that I always tell everybody is is you got you got to know what you know, and more importantly, you got to know what you don't know. And to do that, you you've got to uh, whiteboard, reverse engineer exactly what is supposed to be in your arsenal. And a lot of fighters will focus just on uh, the physical preparation. And uh, you know, one of the articles I wrote years ago, I know you've read, Presumed Compliance, talks about the relationship between emotional, psychological self. And, uh, and physical tactics. And, and the language we use in the article is um, how you feel affects how you think, how you think affects how you feel, both impact your tactics. So if you're going into a jiu-jitsu tournament, um, and you can be the best shape in the world, but if you don't quite understand the rules, suddenly you're disqualified or you're confused or you're not speaking in the language. There's so many things that can, that can throw you off. Um, m my favorite metaphoric quote for this is a Dan Millman quote and he said if you face just one opponent and you doubt yourself you're outnumbered so uh, you know that affects that, that whole that whole psychology um, and uh, I think that's 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 huge because uh, you know the the experience of entering a, a tournament and, and and challenging yourself like that has more uh, emotional psychological components than it does than it does physical mm -hmm. I really believe that I think I think you agree with that and so understanding fear, the psychology of fear versus the biology of fear, everyone gets butterflies, everyone gets, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, one of my favorite stories about that um, was I was coaching this, uh, this kid for a kickboxing match, and he worked his way up uh, to a title fight, and he was fighting one of Johnny Terrio's, you know, legendary kickboxer, one of his guys, in a big auditorium, and so we're, you know, 15 minutes before, official comes in, knocks in, says, hey, 15 minutes, and, uh, so I said, thanks. I said, hey, Sean, how are you feeling? He said, good coach, good coach, nervous. I said, well, you're supposed to be nervous. You're about to get in a fight. And, uh, and uh, uh, I said, but remember, when you're staring across the guy and the ref's giving you instructions and he's giving you the, you know, the Roberta Duran, you know, face like stone, hands of stone, face and all that shit. I said, just, he's nervous too inside. You know, forget, forget what his mask is. He goes, thanks, coach. And I sit down and like something's like nagging me. I'm sitting there and I'm going, Shit, you know, I gave him one of these Zen fortune cookie answers. I didn't give him, I didn't dial it down, and I didn't or drill it down. I didn't peel that onion and get to the core, because he could have been, you know, worried that his girlfriend was ringside, his parents were there, you know, he was fighting in front of 14,000 people instead of a, in a bingo parlor. There's a lot of things that change your game. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, Sean, I gotta apologize for that answer. He's like, what are you talking about? That was a great answer, I liked it. And uh, I said, no, I just, I gave you a Zen, I popped open a Zen fortune cookie and I gave you a custom auto quote. You know, the difference between the hero and the coward is this, blah, blah, blah. Thanks, coach. So I said, what exactly are you afraid of? And he answered something I had never guessed because I'd seen him do 10 rounds, mm -hmm. no problem. Mm -hmm. He goes, I don't know if I can do four rounds. He said, I've done three rounds, but four rounds in a title fight is different. Yeah, and you know, like you get in a ring with someone good and your legs feel like they're 100 pounds each. Right, right, right. And you're like, what round is it? And you go, the bell hasn't rung yet, you know? So, uh, so I said, Jesus, you know, I looked at him, I said, uh, I said, Sean, can you do two rounds? And he goes, yeah, of course. I said, so just two, do two rounds twice. And he smiled, and that's what we did. Second round, I'm in the ring, I go, can you do two rounds? He said, of course. Amazingly, like this was a bad Hollywood, you know, B right. film, right. you know, we were back in kickboxing back in the day, there was a 14 foot uh, uh, ring, so it was 12 feet between corners. You can hear the other corner, I mean, it was a tiny ring. And I heard the, uh, the other uh, fighter say, just after I said, can you do two rounds? He goes, yeah. The other guy goes, uh, coach, what round is it? It was just amazing. He went in and won the title uh, that night. But that, to me, you know, for, for, for everybody trying to glean some insight from this little interview, is uh, uh, you gotta, you, there's going to be something that's nagging at you. You know, am I going to make weight? Uh, am I going to lose this fight? Am I going to get cut? Am I going to get signed? Am I? And you need to just fucking focus on the fighter, yeah. right? So, yeah, yeah. Good that's stuff. that's the biggest thing for that.